Welcome to a second part to the lesson on the simplex method in order to solve standard maximization problems. In this lesson we'll be solving this standard maximization problem. We have the objective function and we have our constraints. The first step is to convert the system of inequalities to equations using slack variables. So we're not concerned about these last three inequalities that tell us that x, y, and z are non-negative. We're going to write these first two inequalities as equations. Notice how in both cases the left side is less than or equal to the right side. So if we add a slack variable to the left side, we can make it equal to the right side. So for the first inequality, we'd have the equation 2x plus 2y plus z plus the slack variable, which we'll call s, equals eight. For the second inequality, we would have x plus four y minus three z plus a second slack variable, which we'll call t, equals twelve. And now step two, we set the objective function equal to zero. We want p to remain positive. So we'll subtract the variable terms on both sides, which would give us negative 12x minus 15y minus 5z plus p equals zero. And now we can create the simplex table or tableau and label the active or basic variables. So to begin, we label the columns with the variables used. So we have x, y, z, s, t, p. Next, the coefficients of our equations will give us the entries in the rows. So row one would be two, two, one, one. The t and p coefficients would be zero, so we'd have zero, zero, and then eight, which we see here in the first row. For the second row, looking at our second equation, we'd have one, four, negative three, zero for the s coefficient, one for the t coefficient, zero for the p coefficient, and 12 for the constant, which we see here. For the third row, we'd have negative 12, negative 15, negative 5, 0, 0, 1, and 0. So this is the initial tableau. We do want to label the active or basic variables, which should be the columns that only contain 1 and zeros. Notice how that would be s. So we put a s to the left of this row where the 1 is. T is also active, so we put a T to the left of the one in this row. And P is also active, so we put a P on the left of row three. We could find the active variables at the very end, but we'll keep track of them as we go. Now I'll take this tableau to the next slide, and in step four, we want to select the pivot column, which is the column with the most negative number on the left side of the bottom row. So notice how negative 15 is the most negative of these numbers and therefore this would be the pivot column, column two. Now we want to select the pivot row. We divide each entry in the constant column here by the corresponding positive entry in the pivot column. The smallest positive ratio indicates the pivot row. So here we'd have eight divided by two, which is four. Here we have 12 divided by four, which is equal to three. Since three is less than four, row two is the pivot row. So now we select the pivot. The pivot is the entry in the pivot column and the pivot row, which must be positive, which is four. So now that we've found our pivot, which again is this four, we perform row operations to make the pivot equal to one and the remaining elements in the pivot column equal to zero. I did mention before making the pivot equal to one is optional, but if we don't do it now, there'll be extra steps later. So let's go ahead and make our pivot equal to one. We'll do this by replacing row two with one-fourth times row two. And to save some time, I've already done that here. Row two has been replaced with one-fourth times row two, which you can verify if you wish. So now our pivot is positive one. Now we want to make the remaining entries in this column equal to zero. Notice how we can make this two equal to zero if we replace row one with row one minus two times row two. So we'll replace row one with row one 
minus two times row two. Now we want negative 15 to be zero, so we'll replace row three with row three plus 15 times row two. Let's perform these row operations on the calculator. And we'll do this from the home screen, even though we could use some of the matrix features on the calculator. To enter in a row, we use these squiggly brackets, so we press second, open parenthesis, we'll enter row one, and our goal here is to perform the row operation, row one minus two times row two. So we have two comma two comma one comma one comma zero comma zero comma eight. Close this row. And then we have minus two times row two, so second, open parenthesis, so one fourth, comma one, comma negative three fourths, comma zero, comma one fourth, comma zero, comma three, and close the row and enter. Here we have decimals. To get fractions, we press math, enter, enter. So we have three halves, zero, five halves, one, negative one half, zero, and if we arrow to the right, the last entry is two. Let's go ahead and record these. And now we'll perform the row operation, row three plus 15 times row two. After showing this row operation, I'll just go ahead and record them to save time. So we have row three, second open parenthesis, row three is negative 12, comma negative 15, comma negative five, comma zero, comma zero, comma one, comma zero. Close row three, and then plus 15, again times row two. Close the row and enter. And math, enter, enter. So we have negative 33 fourths, zero, negative 65 fourths, zero, 15 fourths, one, and 45. Let's record these. Notice how P has increased to 45. We also want to keep track of the active variables T was an active variable here, but when we pivoted around one, Y became active. Notice how the column Y only contains a one and zeros. So we changed the T to a Y, S and Y are now active. Now that we have this tableau, we will repeat the process by identifying the most negative entry on the left side of the last row. So we do the same thing again, and notice how looking at the last row, the most negative entry would be negative 65 fourths, which means this is our new pivot column. Now we want to identify the pivot row. So we take our constants on the right and divide by the non-negative entries in our pivot column. So we'd have two divided by five halves, which equals four fifths. Notice here we'd have three divided by negative three fourths and the pivot can't be negative, so we're actually done. Row one is our new pivot row. Which means our new pivot is five halves. So now we're back at step seven. Perform row operations to make the pivot equal to one and the remaining elements in the pivot column equal to zero. So let's begin by making the pivot equal to one. To make five halves equal to one, we'd multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of five halves is two fifths. So we'd replace row one with two fifths times row one. And I've already done that. Again, to save some time, I'm not gonna show this. And now we wanna make, now our goal is to make this entry and this entry equal to zero. So to do this, we can replace row two with row two plus three-fourths times row one. So row two 
replace this with row two plus three-fourths times row one. And then to make this entry zero, we'd have to, we can replace row three with row three plus 65 fourths times row one. Let's go ahead and show one more of these on the calculator. Let's perform the row operation row two plus three-fourths times row one. So second open parenthesis row two is one-fourth, comma one, comma negative three-fourths, and so on. So there's row two plus three-fourths, three divided by four times row one. So now we enter the elements in row one. So three-fifths, comma zero, comma one, and so on. I think you get the idea. Close the row, and enter, and math, enter, enter. So seven-tenths, one, zero, three-tenths, one-tenth, zero, and eighteen-fifths. Let's go ahead and record that. I'll assume we can perform this row operation. The result would be three-halves, zero, zero, thirteen halves, one half, one, and fifty-eight. Now remember we pivoted around, and when we performed this pivot, we did change the active variable again. The variable s departed, and z became the new active variable. So we label row one with z. Of course we can also verify this by looking at column z. Notice how column z contains only a one and zeros. Notice how the bottom row does not contain any negatives, so we're done. This is our final tableau, which we can use to solve our maximization problem. We can find the value of the active variables straight from the table, and the non-active variables are equal to zero. So notice how z is active, which we can tell because it's labeled here, and also because of the column has a one and only zeros. So z, or one z, equals four-fifths, Y is also active, which we can see here labeled as well as in the column. So one Y equals eighteen-fifths, or Y equals eighteen-fifths. And also notice that P is active. P, or one P equals fifty-eight, which is the maximum value of P. The remaining variables, X equals zero, as well as the two slack variables, s and t. So let's go ahead and summarize this. The maximum is p equals 58 at, remember we're trying to solve this in terms of x, y, and z, so x equals zero, y equals 18 fifths, and z equals four fifths. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.